Welcome to the Bioneers, revolution from the heart of nature. We're a part of this movement that 24 hours a day in every nook, cranny, and watershed across this planet is waking up and taking action to care for people in place under trees and on porches and in houses and in churches. It's all alive. It's all connected. It's all intelligent. It's all relatives. We stand at the threshold of a historic opportunity in the human experiment to reimagine how to live on Earth in ways that honor the web of life, each other, and future generations. It's a revolution from the heart of nature and the human heart. In this series, The Bioneers, Revolution from the Heart of Nature, we celebrate social and scientific innovators with breakthrough solutions for restoring people and planet, creating a future environment of hope. This program was made possible in part by Organic Valley's pasture-raised organic dairy products, bringing the good from our family farmers to your table at organicvalley.coop. Mary's Gone Crackers, inspired by a conscious approach to eating, organic, gluten-free, and non-GMO products since 2004 at marysgonecrackers.com. Funding also provided by a grant from the Park Foundation, dedicated to heightening public awareness of critical issues, and by the generous support of listeners like you. Perhaps you remember the classic science experiment from grade school where you have a glass of water and a bowl of sugar. You add a teaspoon of sugar to the water, and nothing happens. You add another, then another, and another, until suddenly, magically, the water crystallizes into a solid block. When we fully grasp the magnitude of the global ecological crisis, it can feel completely overwhelming. It's clear it demands bringing really big solutions to large scales. So what difference can one person or one community really make? Why bother? But like those teaspoons of sugar, thousands of small acts have a way of adding up. Then one day the system crystallizes and changes its state. In neighborhoods across the world, citizens are building community resilience, one shovel full and one backyard at a time. In this program, we visit with visionary citizen restorationists, Trayton Heckman and Jesse Lerner. They're showing how small acts can turn into big change. This is Small Acts, Big Change, Ripples of Community Resilience. My name is Neil Harvey. I'll be your host. Welcome to the Bioneers, revolution from the heart of nature. Can we change the world in a garden, which is kind of provocative, and that's where so we come from, by thinking like a garden and acting like a garden and organizing like a garden and supporting policies at our municipalities that do the same. Trayton Heckman is executive director and founder of Daily Acts in Sonoma County, California. The innovative nonprofit organization provides local communities with hands-on skill-building workshops and sustainability education. It encourages citizens to regenerate nature and engage with neighbors to build community. Daily Acts gives tours, teaches people how to keep bees, raise chickens, and tend to personal and financial ecology. The byword is community resilience. In order to build community resilience, we have to build personal resilience and home-scale neighborhood resilience. That's actually a cornerstone of community resilience, is our ability to meet our own needs and to build trust and relationships in our neighborhoods and to get engaged so we could have local power in our cities and in our counties and local food and local water care and things like that. So we teach people about these things. We do tours of the incredible models working around us, showing people, saying, look at the amazing work being done. You could smell it, you could touch it, you could taste it. Then we start doing skill building workshops. And then we get people together and we transform things. Trayton Heckman planted the seeds of his organization in 2002, when as a young man, he took a leap of faith and started publishing a small magazine. So I published this little black and white journal, Ripples, 
pushed through a lot of fear of just putting my voice on the page and speaking sort of poetically. And, and there was this incredible response and it just resonated and neighbors knocking on my door and people sending emails. And before long, I was getting letters from England and Canada and this little black and white zine just moved out in the world. And so is that trying to find my voice to help other people find their voice, which is really core. And then about a month later, I organized a sustainability tour. I saw in a permaculture magazine how Berkeley had this sustainability bike tour. I'm like, well, we need to do that in Sonoma County. I don't know what else is happening out here, but we got to highlight these solutions. And so I talked to Toyota. Priuses came out that year, and they boldly lend me a fleet of Priuses. It got published in the paper. And so we had these two groups of like 35 people crisscrossing the county to show people the face of this healthy, just, reverent, and resilient world being born. These amazing farmers and permaculturists and bioneers, basically, our local bioneers, and to expose people to them and at the same time give them their voice. And so it empowered these engaged leaders and connected those networks while also empowering these citizens who were showing up and saying, your choices matter, and connecting them with a community of support and getting in the media to grow our ripples. And for the infinite types of things we do now, a lot of those sort of core truths are pretty much in most of the programs we're running. Heckman and Daily Acts focus on DIY, do-it-yourself cornerstones such as building soil, planting food forests, and recycling water. They show people how they can restore their place and benefit in countless ways by working with nature's operating instructions. And so for us, it's just, what would nature do? Mimicking nature. So instead of ripping out your soil, we sheet mulch it. We use our recycled cardboard boxes and recycled t-shirts, and you lay that down like layering a lasagna, and you build soil. And through time, we've added 40,000 pounds, 20 tons of organic matter, mostly free and recycled, to our backyard to build the soil, the fertility, the vitality, the rainwater catching capacity of that soil. And then we plant in, you know, like a forest ecology, not just a row crop of corn. We plant up to seven layers of plants that fit together. If you have all things that are the same size and shape, they have the same needs. They compete. But you could have a really tall tree, and then you could have an understory shrub that has a different root zone and different light and height needs. And you could have a vining layer, grapes or hops or kiwis vining up. And then you have a layer below that, you know, maybe you have your little blueberry bush and you have a ground cover, you have your creeping thyme or your thyme for medicine or chamomile for tea. And then you have your root crops, maybe it's burdock root or horseradish. And so you get up to seven layers and you're sort of mimicking the structure of what a forest could look like. And so you're building soil and you're planting this diversity of beneficial plants and it's bringing in all these beneficial critters. In today's water-scarce world, managing water wisely is imperative. We are currently wasting vast amounts of water. Just the term waste water says it all. In nature, there is no waste. One of Heckman's neighbor friends used a system that turns wastewater into water wonders. The system is called a bioswale, catching surface runoff water, filtering out silt and pollutants, and diverting it for beneficial uses. And the city was running, they had a big pipe running under his backyard, and it was taking all the rainwater from above an apartment complex behind his property, taking it away, right? But there is no way in a cyclic existence. So he talked to the city, he said, hey, could I put in a gate valve? And now he's sinking hundreds of thousands of gallons of water. Instead of going under his property, it's going through a channel of swales and following like a river pattern and through ponds, and it's sinking that water in his backyard and growing this ecological food forest, right? It's an edible ecosystem. And you catch the rain that comes off your roof. We catch the rain that comes off of our chicken coop roof and have a little self-watering system, so I don't even have to give the chickens water most of the time. They just self-water. And so you're using these elements. It's not a garden. It's this living, breathing system. And then maybe your bees swarm like ours did, and then They land in our neighbor's yard, then our neighbors start keeping bees. Or you start harvesting your neighbor's roof water and run it over the fence to feed your fruit trees. And you could do this. You don't have to own a place. You could rent it. It could be, there's so many creative ways to do this. I have a friend who did a third story balcony food forest. You could use these same principles in a container garden or a community garden or on a rooftop. And that's the beauty of it because with nature's operating instructions, it may look different in Petaluma than Brooklyn than Sub-Saharan Africa but they're rooted in 
these principles that are timeless and true and woven through the fabric of life produce no waste, create no harm. Daily Acts created the Community Resilience Challenge to help inspire people to save water, grow food, conserve energy, and build community. One group of neighbors transformed their rental unit from an empty lot to a lush garden where they propagate plants and give them away for free. Then they looked across the fence to see if they could inspire other neighbors. And there's a rental unit next to them that the lady was going to rent it and she was just going to round up everything, you know, put a bunch of chemicals on. And then a person renting this place, hey, don't worry, we'll come over and we'll sheet mulch it. We'll build soil the way nature does and get rid of those weeds. And she's sort of confused because she's like, you mean you're just going to come over and give free labor to my rental unit? And then they start doing this and helping other neighbors transform their yards and lawns and inspire them to do that and building community. This is one of 7,000 local actions this year, Nancy and Jim Haig's house. And so they heard one of our volunteers telling the story about how since she did this front yard garden and did her gray water system, it's helped change her life. And she's met more neighbors in a year of doing it than in two decades of living in her house. And so Nancy heard that, and it kind of touched her. And they're like, yes, that's what we need to do. It's not just resource savings. It's connection. It's relationships. So now kids come up in the neighborhood, and they get a book out of the free library in their front yard. And then they sit there, and they're reading the book, and they're picking strawberries. And the lawn that was a lawn behind them is now this beautiful landscape, saving 15,000 gallons of water a month, one lawn. Sometimes going to scale doesn't mean getting bigger. It means go forth and multiply. When we return, inspiring parables from a growing network of eco-municipalities in Madison, Wisconsin, and more DIY, yes, in my backyard stories from Trayth and Heckman. This is Small Acts, Big Change, Ripples of Community Resilience. I'm Neil Harvey. You're listening to The Bioneers, revolution from the heart of nature. To explore all available Bioneers radio shows, video programming, and more from Trafe and Heckman, please visit Bioneers.org. And our thanks for the generous support from listeners like you. In Madison, Wisconsin, Jesse Lerner is Executive Director of Sustain Dane in Dane County. This nonprofit pathfinder has a variety of breakthrough programs to build ecological and community resilience. All of Sustained Dane's programs help individuals make positive change in their particular spheres of influence, whether at school, at work, or in their neighborhoods, stimulating a high level of local participation. One project Sustained Dane co-created to engage school districts is the Growing Outdoor Classrooms program. Jesse Lerner has seen this project inspire residents to action who previously felt helpless in the face of forbidding challenges like climate change. So we met this woman, Stephanie, who was a parent at one of the local schools, and she was really hopeless about climate change. Just, oh my God, I'm going to leave my daughter in this world, and I just don't know what's going to happen, and just felt very disempowered. And she applied to participate in our outdoor classrooms program, GROW, and was able to really create a lot of community with the other teachers and parents and even students in building this outdoor classroom. And they now have on-site composting and enhanced garden beds and those beautiful teepees where the beans grow up that the kids helped create. You know, so there's all this co-creation, co-ownership and composting in the lunchrooms by bringing in the facilities and the grounds, people who were kind of some of the obstacles. Now everyone's on the same page. 
And she's just this force, right? She's like, I'm not depressed anymore. I made this happen. Look at this garden that exists because I got involved. And she's just going to keep going. So, you know, that's one person from our school program. And we've got six different programs. So, Another program Sustained Dane created is Empower Champions Business Program, a one-year voluntary program for local businesses to turn intention into action. Sustained Dane meets with businesses once a month to help them implement practical applications of sustainability, such as energy efficiency or stormwater management. These practices also provide a formidable return on investment. In just six years, Sustained Dane worked with over 70 organizations that implemented 325 sustainability projects. And the impact of that has been over 26,000 tons of carbon every year, which is like taking 5,100 cars off the road every year. And the financial impact has been over $1 million. That's from all these tiny little projects, so that collective impact. So an example, Kate is a green team leader at Union Cab. And as a cab company, they understood that a significant portion of their carbon footprint was related to their fleet. And they drove these big Crown Vicks that they got from however they got the big cars, and they were able to switch one of those cars to a Prius. That was one of their Empower projects. On one hand, that sounds like a really big purchase, buying a Prius. But on the other hand, they buy 20 new cars for themselves every year. So it's changing 1 20th of their purchase and behavior. And by the end of that year, they had four. And so when I shared those numbers of the over a million dollar cost savings, that's only including those four cars. But four years later, their entire fleet, which is over 30 vehicles, is now Prius. And then the next step, they have solar on their roof. Through Empower, Jesse Lerner and Sustain Dane also worked with a local credit union on an energy efficiency plan to keep its employees cooler during very hot summers. They came up with a decidedly low-tech solution. They have a dress code, which is business appropriate, right? Long sleeve, long pants. And they were trying to reduce their peak energy, recognizing that there's, you know, some stuff that's behind the scenes, facilities behind the walls that no one sees. But they also wanted to increase their AC temperature. But they were getting pushback from employees because it was so hot. So they got facilities and HR together. And the day before really hot days, the head of HR would send out an email saying, tomorrow you can wear shorts because we're going to not have the AC at, say, 70. We're going to have it at, ooh, 74, right? I mean, it's, but so then there was this visual for employees of, oh, we're together, we're helping reduce our footprints. Sustain Dane also consults on sustainable food choices through the Empower program helping businesses create plans for on-site gardens, cafeterias that serve organic and healthy foods, and payroll deductions to employees involved in community-supported agriculture. Sustain Dane is committed to turning vision into action. But first, you need the vision, and that's an art, not a science. So the group started the SMART program, which stands for Sustainability Plus Madison Plus Art. Sustain Dane and other local groups organized an event where the community came together with a lead artist to discuss its vision of a healthy, happy neighborhood. Over 100 community members showed up. They decided they wanted a mural on the side of a Salvation Army building that would represent their vision, which included green spaces, bike lanes, and community gardens. Everyone agreed they also wanted affordable housing, safe streets, as well as community cookouts and block parties. One of the challenges of sustainability is often is it's so long term. You know, the impacts, because you're dealing with systems, it might happen 5, 10, 15, 20 years, right? You're like, this isn't satisfying. So by having that conversation in collaboration with a artist and then having the themes of that conversation impact the design of a piece of art that the community helps co-create, you then have this immediate visual reminder of what our hopes are So sustainability, let's just break it down to being happy and healthy, right? And especially if you're part of a community that is not having your daily needs met, 
then that needs to come first, right? And this recognition that sustainability isn't a luxury and kind of working through, well, how can sustainability as a lens help meet your needs, meet my needs? One of our hopes with SMART is to engage as many neighborhoods that want to in this conversation and hoping to broaden the conversation so that it's not just middle-class people with chickens in their backyards and it's a broader group engaging in what a sustainable future is and how do I live that. With this new kind of vision of community resilience, the old metrics of financial return on investment are too narrow. If sustainability is about being happy and healthy, how do you value community building? How about return on engagement? And how do you measure the impact of social connection and recognizing all of our programs are building social fabric? I mean, yes, they're saving natural resources, but they're also increasing connection between individuals and building relationships and building community. And how can we measure that? And how can that be in itself enough of a justification to do something? And I would love for Sustained Dane to be part of the group of individuals figuring that out because I know it's not unique to us in Madison that everyone all over the country is asking that question. Jesse Lerner. Back in California, Trayton Heckman at Daily Acts also consults on planning and design with local businesses, schools, and municipalities. With other nonprofits, Daily Acts has partnered with city agencies, schools, churches, and neighborhoods to plant and revitalize 628 gardens and register them on a map. Heckman established a project in Petaluma that gained a lot of momentum after he pitched an idea to the city's water conservation coordinator. Dave, we need to plant a food forest across the street at the Boys and Girls Center. He's like, what's a food forest? And so I explained it to him, you know, and, you know, we're in a pretty bad drought in California. And in a lot of places, state best practices rip out the turf and take it away. And it goes to the landfill where it becomes 23 times the greenhouse gas emissions. You're saving water, but you're exporting your topsoil and it's creating more problems instead of sheet mulching it in place. So we got 150 volunteers to come out over three days. And we were like, sweet, we're going to handle the water conservation problem. Drop water use 80 percent. And we're going to grow food and medicine, even though that's not in the department. And we'll handle stormwater. Years later now, there's new state stormwater requirements that the cities have to save stormwater and do certain types of education. They have no more money to do it with, right? So they're kind of like, great, new regulations, no more money. Five years ago, we'll address stormwater as well. We'll dig rain gardens and swales. And addressing all these benefits, we'll put in Cobb benches. Now there's a new organization that lives there, and they serve 300 at-risk youth. So we'll start doing educational programming and teaching the kids about growing healthy food. And so the guy we work with, his boss comes by in the weekend. It's 85 degrees out. People are digging clay, and they're laughing, and they're having fun. He has kids, and he's kind of confused. And he's like, what's happening here? You're, you, it's really hot out, and you're digging clay, but you look like you're having fun, and you're saving us water, and you're saving us money, and you're strengthening the fiber of our community. And so since then, they don't recommend ripping out the turf. They have their mulch madness program that they base around the first two sheet mulches we did together. They've given out free resources from local companies, local recycled wood chips, local recycled cardboard, to sheet mulch over 500 lawns. And now more citizens are asking for it and more cities are doing it. It's being looked at as a regional model in the East Bay and other places. This led Heckman, two partner organizations, and 250 volunteers to transform the Petaluma City Hall landscape in just one day. They set up community garden beds and rainwater catchment tanks saving the city over a million gallons of water a year. Small acts creating big change, going to scale by multiplying. For Traith and Heckman, the work is deeply personal. It's essential to him that he and his family embody the same kind of sustainable living that Daily Acts is helping promote. He and his wife, Mary, have created their own home food forest in which their daughter, Ella, learns and well, revels. Ella goes out and she forages in our garden every day and she just pulled out a handful of strawberry guavas and she just grazes about the garden. And when she takes a bath, it goes out into the garden into the constructed wetland gray water system that mimics a natural ecology that feeds the food forest. I took cuttings from a friend's tree, Roger, this amazing 
old school homesteader down our street who taught me a lot who passed away this year. But I took cuttings from a Sangiovese grapes and just stick a cutting in the ground and now we have grapevines growing up the west side of our house to passively cool the hot side of our house and we just harvested a bunch of grapes and so then we're going to stomp that into wine and we're going to make Sangiovese wine from Roger's grapes and then I'll refill the bottles that I got from his kids and so then we'll make some wine with our neighbors and friends and every time I press Roger's grapes or refill his bottles saving a lot of energy and resources doing it with friends building community remembering our elders, bringing them back in, creates incredible richness to harvest the honey from the bees and use the lavender and the chamomile in the front yard to make honey wine. So I feel really good creating that environment for her and fortunate and recognizing that not all families and kids have this, but I want to work towards all families and all communities to have these sort of things. We live in a really painful but also a really amazing time. I mean, there's never been a time when your small choices have mattered more and that we're a part of this movement that 24 hours a day in every nook, cranny, and watershed across this planet is waking up and taking action to care for people in place under trees and on porches and in houses and in churches. And so it's just a feeling doing the best we could do to live our potential and care for nature and community as many scales as we can while also feeling a part of this larger movement. It's such an amazing time to be alive adding teaspoons of daily green acts, knowing one of these days it will crystallize into big change. Small acts, big change. Ripples of community resilience. You can see and hear more from Trafin Heckman or explore more Bioneers radio shows and video programming online at Bioneers.org. For information on attending the National Bioneers Conference and Bioneers events in your area, please visit Bioneers.org or call 1-877-BIONEER. The Bioneers, Revolution from the Heart of Nature is a production of Bioneers and Collective Heritage Institute. Executive producer, Kenny Ausubel. Written by Kenny Ausubel. Senior producer, Neil Harvey. Managing producer, Stephanie Welch. Interview recording engineer, Jeff Westman. Our theme music is taken from the album Journey Between by Baca Beyond and used by permission of Hannibal Records, a Rykodisc label. Additional music was made available by Sounds True at SoundsTrue.com. For more music information, please visit Bioneers.org. The opinions expressed in the Bioneers Revolution from the Heart of Nature radio series are those of the presenters and are not necessarily those of Bioneers and Collective Heritage Institute, the underwriters, or this radio station. My name is Neil Harvey. Thank you for listening. I invite you to join the Bioneers in inspiring a shift to live on Earth in ways that honor the web of life, each other, and future generations. This is program number 1215. Support for the Bioneers Revolution from the Heart of Nature is provided in part by Organic Valley Family of Farms and Mary's Gone Crackers.